welcome. And let's hear what the Spirit of the Lord has for us tonight. Yes, let's do it. Well, good evening. There ain't no church like the Way World Outreach. This kind of feels home away from home. It is so good to be here on this wonderful Wednesday evening. How many of you are enjoying the rain? Uh, we know that it's needed in this hour, but as I was worshiping, I got caught up. And this young lady in the black sweatshirt right here, will you just come real quick? Right there, yeah. She's like, who, me? Yes. Come over here. Come into the light. This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He says, you have been instructed well by your earthly father, by your earthly mother. And he says, and now you will become an instructor unto many. Listen, li this is so powerful because what I saw is you are the do-it-yourself person. And so what you need is a hand to guide and to lead, not to do. You like to do. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, because you have been trained with a hand that guides. He says, now you will be a hand that helps stir those that want to have nothing to do with their parents, nothing to do with their family. You will begin to guide them back into family relationship. God says, I am going to use you as a minister of reconciliation to restore youth back to their father, back to their mother, to teach them how to forgive. You won't, you won't do it for them, but the way you are guided, you will guide them into a place of victory where the instruction of the Lord will be put on your tongue. And when you speak, you will speak with the spirit of Sophia, which means wisdom. Great wisdom has been imparted to you to usher back a generation to the heart of their father, to the heart of the mother. God says, get ready because there will be many that you will meet that said, I do not like or I don't want relationship with my parents, but you will teach them from the other side the power of covering, the power of connectivity, the power of relationship, and they will be greatly restored. Get ready, says the Lord, because I'm going to raise you up to be a strong voice and a hand that will lead, a hand that will guide a generation unto healing. For I pour out a fresh spirit upon you, a fresh anointing to lead a generation. I impart that to you this day by my spirit, says the Lord. Come on, someone say yes. Ah, I feel lightning bolts in here. I feel electricity that's just radiating through my body. Before I take off, I want to give honor to the set man of God, Pastor Marcos, his lovely wife and his wonderful family. I honor the gift of God that you are. I bring residings from my bishop, Pastor Joey and Meredith Zamora. They send your love to all the World, World, World Outreach Center, the way World Outreach. They love you guys as well. Why don't you go ahead and grab your seats? I'm telling you, the spirit of prophecy is on my tongue. I want to preach, but yet, ah, say go with the flow. I'm telling you, God wants to flow in this house. And there is so many things that I see taking place, it's hard to look anywhere and not be stirred up. See, this young lady that just opened your notebook, will you come? See, it's the little things that catches the heart of God. She just suddenly said, oh, he's going to teach, and opened up her notebook to take a note. But this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He said, the things that you've been writing in your morning devotional are about to come past in the evening hour. He says, do not be surprised when I suddenly awaken you in the midnight hour. He says, in that hour when I stir you, two, three in the morning, don't pray to sleep, pray for impartation. And God says, when you pray, ask. He says, because I'm about to deliver family out of the land of Egypt. But before I delivered Israel out of Egypt, I commanded that they ask for the blessing. God says, this is the season where you ask for the blessing of God to come on your family. He says, their Egypt season is coming to an end and the promised land is before them. I am going to bring them through their dark place into the lighted realm, but they're not leaving darkness empty handed. I'm going to 
bust darkness wide open with a marvelous light and treasures will come unto your family. The treasure of healing, the treasure of salvation, the treasure of joy, the treasure of righteousness, the treasure of peace. It will be bestowed upon your family, he says, because of your willingness to cry in the midnight hour. I bless your family this day because of your work, says the Spirit of God. Just taking a deep breath. I send the word. Ah, I'm telling you, this is going to be a season like none other. God spoke to me in my time of worship and he said these words, Rob, your fight is not in vain. Your fight is unto a fruitful place. How many of you felt like you've been in some type of battle? Another word for battle is struggle. Anybody ever heard the term, the struggle is real? When you hear the word struggle, is it a positive or a negative? So that, ooh, and silence came upon the house. So is struggle a negative or a positive? It depends on the perspective. And so what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, he said, I want to turn your struggle into a rightful understanding. Because the word struggle means a fight to live. When someone's struggling for their life, it means they're fighting not to die. They're fighting to what? Live. Could it be that everything that you have faced this year was a fight to live? So can I tell you what the Spirit of the Lord announced to me? He said, this is your be fruitful and multiply season. He says, your day of affliction is no longer before you, it's behind you, and it's your season of increase. And I want to tell you today that the fight that you've been in is a fight for fruitfulness. As we get ready to step into the new year 2022, I began to ask God, what do you want to say? So I studied the number 22, and it's a, it's, it's a word that signifies that the hand of God is open, and it speaks of God's fruitful mandate. Can I tell you what 2022 is going to be? It's going to be a year that God shows himself fruitful in your life. And the scripture that God gave me as a key is found in the book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 22 and it says Joseph is a fruitful son and the builder of God's household. Can I announce to you that when your name is Joseph or you're a Joseph house, can I tell you what Joseph's name means? It means to add. Can I tell you that this is going to be the season of your doubly fruitful land? This is going to be your season of the double portion. It's going to be the season of greater increase. It's going to be the season where your affliction comes to an end and the promises of God begin to manifest. See, one thing that God spoke to me that rang hard in my spirit was this. Fruitfulness is not an absolute because you go to church. Let me say that again. Fruitfulness is not an absolute because you attend church. He said, fruitfulness is the result of coming into kingdom order through obedience that gave you the power to overcome your difficult place. And this is what the Spirit of God wants you to do in this hour. He wants you to silence every voice of intimidation and fear that is operated against you. And so as I was pondering, God, what is it that you want to do? And he said, I want to silence the voice of every giant. Do you realize that Goliath presented himself before the nation of Israel with a challenge, morning and evening? He stood before the nation and said, give me a man to what? Fight. He did this in the morning and the evening for 40 days. How many times did Goliath show up before the nation of Israel? 80 times, you're right. Watch this. Do you realize that Goliath was a voice of intimidation? When he challenged Israel, give me a man to fight, what happened to the nation of Israel? They were fearful and afraid. The Bible doesn't just say fearful, it says dreadful. It means they melted like wax in a fire. It means they were so overwhelmed that they had no fight in them. His voice was so intimidating that they gave up before they ever engaged. Now watch why this is so important. Because it's warfare. 
It's mental affliction. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. This is exactly what Goliath was doing. He was making a nation's heart fail. Because we must understand, what controls your morning controls your what? Day. What controls your evening controls your night and your ability to rest. You got to catch this. The enemy was not just trying to take the day, he was trying to take his night. So when Goliath would stand up, he would cause the heart of the nation to fail. And so instead of looking towards, it began to look back. Can I tell you today that what God told me to tell this house is the day of looking back is over. It's time to look forward and ahead. It's time to look through and into everything that I have. God says, I'm going to give you the power to see your tomorrow today, and I'm going to give you the power to run and not grow weary. This is your season to step through and into everything that God promises. So what happens to turn this nation around? God had to send a man by the name of David who had never heard the voice of Goliath. God had to find somebody in the backside of a wilderness going through a struggle. He had to find somebody on the backside of a desert that didn't hear the words of intimidation. And so when David was suddenly summoned and sent by God and through the word of his father, suddenly Jesse says, go bring me a report of how your brothers fare in battle. And he sends David. When David comes to the battlefield, it was Goliath. 80th time standing up before the nation saying give me a man to fight the number 80 is important because the number 80 means freedom from oppression God had to find a man that was in the wilderness God had to find a man that was struggling to live God had to find a man in a difficult place to send him to where the battle was raging because a man that has gone through it has the power to deliver to it can I tell you today that God is going to take your struggle that you've gone through maybe through these last 24 years or 24 months and he's about to use it to become a word that will set a man a woman a child a family a generation at liberty who wants to be a voice that sets people free See, Moses was 80 years old when God told him to go to Pharaoh. Do you realize that when Joseph became king in Egypt, he was 30 years old. Do you know how long he ruled? He ruled for 80 years when he died at 110 years old. Can I tell you that not only does 80 mean freedom from oppression, it also means the power to live. Can I tell you today, every oppression that you have went through has given you the power to become a voice of life, a word of liberty, a hand that would set somebody free. I sense in my spirit that your struggle is not before you, it's behind you. And now God is going to use you to be a deliverer just like David. Who here is ready to be a voice of restoration? Who here is ready to face the giants, not run from it, but command it to fall? So this is what happens with David. He comes out of the backside of a wilderness, sent by his father to the battlefield. When he comes to the battlefield... He hears Goliath standing up on the 40th day, excuse me, on the 40th night saying, give me a man to fight. The nation was afraid, dismayed, and they scattered. But David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Do you realize that David had never heard the voice of Goliath, so he was not intimidated? Can I tell you that when you do not listen to CNN, MSNBC, when you don't listen to what the world is saying, but when you listen to what the heavens are saying, you say these words. <laughs> Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this one that is trying to come against the one that I have a cut covenant with? Who is the one trying to oppress and oppose my people? When David says these words, he says, what shall be done for the man who sets or brings an end to the captivity of Israel by killing this giant? What shall be done for the man who slays this Philistine? What happens in that very moment was powerful because a commander of the army began to speak and he said these words. He said, the king will enrich with great riches. When when the battle comes to an end, there's an enrichment. There is a prosperity. He says, the king will give his daughter. There is a marriage between a king that takes place in your life. Then your father's house will be exempt. Means 
you will be free from the law. You'll come into a place of liberty and taxes. Can I tell you that when David hears these words, there was a Barinsky, someone that doesn't like what's taking place. How many of you know today that there is times that you could be talking about things and then somebody just interjects? And David was in a full-on conversation with a commander. And now what happens is his brother butts into the conversation. And he says to David, in your pride, have you come to see the noisy battle? There was no battle. There was a shouting match. And he says, and your insolence of your heart, whom have you left those few meaningless sheep with? And what does David do? He does something that we need to learn. He turned away. Can I tell you today, there is some battles that you don't need to engage in anymore. Don't engage in political. Don't engage in vaxxed and unvaxxed. Don't engage in masked and unmasked. Don't gain the, don't engage in battles that you can't win or battles that have no power to promote you. So when Eliab butts into the conversation, David says these words, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Say, hmm, when you think of the word cause, what do you think of? You think of purpose. But the word cause in the Hebrew does not mean purpose. The word cause in Hebrew is the word debar. The word debar translates, and it means, do you not have a prophetic word spoken by God written in the depth of your heart? David says, what have I done now? Translate, and it becomes this statement. Am I still your problem? David says to his brother, because David is talking to the commander, he says to his brother, what have I done now? What now is your excuse for not hearing from God and allowing him to scribe a word in your heart? You're mad at me because God spoke to me. You're mad at me because I believed it. You're mad at me because I see destiny and a future. You're mad because... God passed over you, but he only passed over you because you had the look of a king, but not the heart of a king. Today, there is many people that come and they have the look of Christianity, but they don't have the lifestyle. Can I tell you that God is going to favor those that are fruitful? God is going to put the blessing on those that bring increase to the kingdom. See, because there's many people that are faithful to attend church. There's many people loyal to the house. But faithfulness and loyalty doesn't ascribe you to promotion. God promotes the fruitful, not the faithful. God promotes the fruitful, not the loyal. Well, I don't know about that. Read John chapter 5. The Bible talks about a man who attended church for 38 years. And the Bible said that he was in the same condition for a very long time. What was his condition? He didn't have the power to move quickly. Don't you remember that there was a requirement given by God unto two sons, Cain and Abel. And the Bible says that he required an offering and Abel responded and brought him quickly the first fruit of his flock. And then Cain, then Cain came in what? The process of time. You know what that word process of time translates into? It means when he was good darn ready. It means he drug his feet to obedience of what God asked. He didn't hurry. There was no oomph. There was no step into it. There was this, I'll get there when I get there. And what I have is should be enough. Can I tell you, what is it that God is looking for? Someone that hears and obeys. He hasn't called you to be a hearer, but a doer. And so God does not promote the loyal. He does not just promote the faithful, he promotes the fruitful. Watch this. Because this man had went to church for 38 years. He had sat in the same place. Jesus comes to him and he says these words. Do you want to be healed? And instead of him saying yes, what does he do? He complains. When your complaint is louder than your praise, something in your life is out of order. Can I tell you that this is the year, if you have a complaint, lose it. Let those things be behind you. Press towards the mark of the things of the high call set before you. It's time to get over the, the pain of yesterday and step into the glory of tomorrow. Jesus said, do you want to be made well? 
And he stands up and he says these words. See, he was sitting amongst a company of people that were blind, lame, and paralyzed. Jesus says, do you want to be made well? And he says these words. He says, I have no man to put me in the water. When the angel comes and troubles it, he said, another man beats me into it and they are healed. Listen to this. If you want to be fruitful, then build a relationship. Can I tell you that fruitfulness is not done alone. Fruitfulness is done through community. Fruitfulness is done through through relationship. Fruitfulness happens because you interact and engage. This man had been to church for 38 years and listened to his words. I have no man to put me in the water. Translates and says, I have no relationships in the house of God. What does the Bible say? Woe to the man who is alone. If he falls, he what? There's no one to help him up. Isolation and loneliness is a detriment to furthering the kingdom. God is calling this house to be interactive, to be community. He's challenging us to be super relational because that's what's going to change the territory. So Jesus says, do you want to be made well? He says, I have no man to put me in. When the angel stirs it, another man beats me in. Well, let's look at his competition. Blind. How did the blind man see the water get stirred? How did he see the angel trouble the water if he can't see? Let alone beat him into something he should not have been able to visualize. Who else? The lame. Those that were missing body parts or deformed. How does a deformed man beat a man into the water that has infirmity? Infirmity means slow to rise. It means weak-legged. It means crickety. That's all it means. So he had the power to stand up. He had the power to advance. He had the power to beat the blind man. He had the power to beat the lame man. But these men had something that he didn't. Because the other man should have never beat him into the water. Because he was paralyzed. He had no ability to move. How did a paralyzed man get into the water that the angel stirred before him? They all had something he didn't. They all had relationship. 2022 is going to be a year that God causes your past to be behind you. So you're no longer lame, maimed, paralyzed, or crippled. And your excuse gets taken away. And it's going to be a place where relationship puts you into the place where you need to be. Do you realize you won't be in the right place unless you're relational to your father and to others? Watch how powerful this is. When this man has his complaint, Jesus says to him, here's the issue. Pick up your mat and walk. What was his issue? He was sitting on his blessed assurance. I came to tell you that 2022 is the year. That each and every one of us gets busy. It's the year that we move forward. It's the year that we press in. It's not the year to sit and complain. It's not the time to sit and wait. It's the time to step and move forward. Who here is ready to move forward in the things of God? Come on, if so, say yes. So when David said these words, He says, what have I done now? Is there not a cause, a word spoken by God written in your heart? What does he do? He challenges his brother about his excuse. Say excuse. The word excuse means to exit the cause. Translates and means to forfeit what God has spoken by disbelief. Today, there is many people that have forfeited what God has spoken because of unbelief. Because of circumstance becomes greater than promise. Can I tell you today that your circumstance does not dictate the promise God's given you. The promise that God's given you is greater. But you've given the ear to the lesser. And you haven't learned the thing that David teaches us in principle. When, when Eliab said to, to David, who is talking the, to the commander... Whom have you left those few worthless sheep with? And in your pride have you come to see the battle? What does David do? He turns from him. The reason David turns from him is because he understood that 
His brother could not promote him. Can I tell you that this is the hour that you don't engage in battles where there's no promotion and there's no spoil. You don't engage in a battle that is meaningless. You don't get into a war of words. What you do is you turn and walk away. When David turned and walked away, he went to another captain and said, what shall be done? And the same thing was uttered and he said, bring me before Saul. His servant will go and fight. I'm here to announce to you that this is your year that you stand before captains and leaders, that you become captains and leaders. And what you do is you, you give people the power to what? To move forward. Who here is ready to see someone move into the greater promises that God has for this next year? See, if you go through the book of Genesis, chapter 26, 19 through 25, you're going to find out that there was another man that was in a battle. And his name is Isaac. Isaac went to the wells that his father had previously dug. He went to Esek, then to Sitna. And every time he dug and the water sprung up, what happened? The Philistines quarreled with them. And they said, it's ours. What did Isaac do? He walked away. And they went and dug another well. And this time, he comes to a place called Rehoboth. When he comes to Rehoboth, they dig and water springs up. And Rehoboth means a place where God has now made room for us. And here he will make us fruitful and bring increase. Can I tell you that God is about to bring this house, the Wayworld Outreach, unto Rehoboth. He is about to bring you to your fruitful place where you can grow in numbers and be blessed beyond your wildest measure and step into everything that God has. Come on, if you're ready to see the promises of God manifest where God has made room for you to be fruitful and increase, say yes. Let me get ready to conclude because I don't want to preach long. I'm just dropping some nuggets because I want to prophesy. Is that all right? Oh, that didn't move me. <laughs> Can you put Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9 and 10 in the NIV up, please? Listen to this. God says these words. I will look upon you with favor, make you fruitful, and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. You need to see this first part of the scripture because it says God looked upon Israel with favor. Can I tell you what God's looking at when he sees you? He's not looking at your struggle, your hurt, your hardship, your dysfunction. He's looking at the favor he's placed on you. So when he sees you, he sees his favor. And when he sees favor, he sees increase. And when he says increase, he sees prosperity. He sees blessing here, there, and everywhere. So when God is looking upon you, he's not looking at you. He's looking at who you are. You are the resemblance of him. You have been made in his image. You've been made in his likeness. You are a reflection of who he is. So when he's looking at you, he's looking at himself inside of you. And he goes, favor. But when you don't understand what's on you, you'll never operate with what's in you. The Christ, the anointed one, is in you. See, favor doesn't come and go. Favor is a person who lives, and his name is Jesus. When he looks at you, he sees himself, and he sees the favor, and he says, be fruitful. Today, what God wants to do is he wants to bring an end to your difficulty because he wants you to recognize the favor that he's placed on you. And when you see the favor that he's placed on you, listen to what verse 10 says. Leviticus 26, 10. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you will still be eating last year's harvest when you have to what? Move it out to make room for the new. Can I tell you what that means? You're going to end this year in blessing. But God is going to create an opportunity for you to say... <sighs> This is, this is good, but I have to sow it now. I have to make room. I have to move it out because what's coming is so great, it's going to surpass that in which I'm willing to let go of. Can I tell you that when you put the past behind you, you're making room. Don't you remember what the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 5? There was a woman who recognized, or yeah, there was a woman who recognized the man of God who passed by regularly was a holy man. And so what did she say to her husband? Let us... Make room. Can I tell you that 2022 is going to be the year where you make room 
for the move of God. It's going to be a year of suddenlies where God is going to interrupt your schedule. I'm telling you, Wayworld Outreach, get ready because you're going to be having some services that suddenly the Holy Ghost takes off and you have a few things planned and the people are going to cry out, one more day, one more day. One more day, one more service, one more night, one more, one more, one more, one more. And suddenly it's going to become a chant that says, we want God so much, we don't care about what work looks like tomorrow. We don't want to worry about what our kids have to do. The presence of God is going to be so thick in this house that people are going to cry to come to the altar one more day because an auntie, an uncle, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a friend, a co-worker is about to get married radically saved right here. Come on. If you believe that 2022 will be the year of your suddenly, the year of fruitful things, come on, someone say yes. I want you to keep this in your spirit. One more service. One more day. One more. One more. One more. So when you're pastors and your leadership hears you chanting because you're so hungry that whoever the man or woman of God that is bringing something that's so inspired that you can't quit have you ever felt like God I could go again to church I could go again to the house I could go again into that atmosphere I, I, I can't let it go that's when you've learned to turn away from something that has no power to promote you. Where does your promotion come? From the Lord. Promotion is found in the house. Can I tell you what God's getting ready to do? He's getting ready to promote this house. He's getting ready to launch you forward. He's ready to launch you into, and he's ready to make you like him. There is a glory that is filling this atmosphere. If I could have the, the minstrels, because now it's on. I'm ready to prophesy. I just had to drop a few things so you know that God spoke to me. So we could step into everything that God has. Adidas hat, come here. Right here in the front row. Yep. Just lift up your hands. Stretch your hands towards her. Something is radically changing in your life. The hunger of God is being imparted to you. And you're going to have a thirst that runs through your body that said, I'm craving him. I literally see you in the midnight hour waking up to get water, to drink, to quench your thirst. And you'll drink a glass. And I see you moving into your living room space. And I see you with your hands lifted up and tears running down your face. And I heard God say these words, I am more than enough. And I'll quench the hurt and I'll silence the fear and I'll rebuke the devourer and I'll bring forth my glory. I heard the Lord say, I'm bringing you into a holy moment. He said, even as you close your eyes and lift up your hands, you're going to feel your body lift to a high place. He says, this is your Luke 19 moment. Like Zacchaeus, you're separating from the crowd. Just close your eyes. You're separating from circumstances and situations that have been weighing you down. And now God says, even as Zacchaeus came to the tree, what did he do? He ascended. The Lord says, daughter, this is your moment of ascension. It's your moment to climb up, to see from above, from a higher place. You will no longer be looking up the hill. You'll be looking from the top of it, and you will look over the valleys, and you will see the lands that you've conquered, and you'll see the promises that I've set before you and your family. Today is the beginning of a brand new day. There it goes. Receive it. Say, take it. Here it is. He's here. Oh. Black and red sweatshirt. What's your name? Come up here. Couldn't hear that. Jesse. Jesse, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. When I was in worship, he said these words. He said, I am going to cause oppression that has hit your mind and your heart to be lifted. 
I'm going to remove and silence the things of fear, and I'm going to end all torment, and I'm going to bring you, Jesse, into a fruitful place. He says, you're not going to give ear to the things that the world is saying because in the midnight hours, I'm going to visit you, and you're going to hear from heaven. He said, I'm going to begin to write words deep within your spirit that are going to catapult you to a high place where you will become a leader amongst your friends and your family. God says, you have looked at things through a frustrated perspective, but I'm about to change it, and I'm going to cause you to see through the eyes of light and life. And when you open your mouth, you won't say things from a broken heart or from despair or sorrow or trouble. You'll begin to speak from the realm of faith, hope, and love. And you'll begin to speak what tomorrow holds. For the Lord says, I'm going to open your eyes to see. The scripture that comes to me for you is found in 2 Kings chapter 6. And it was the servant of the prophet who went out of the tent. And when he went out, all he saw was trouble. But when he came in, the prophet said, fear not. There's more for you than those that are against you. And the Bible says that he laid hands and he prayed. And his eyes were opened and he saw. And he saw the mountain covered in glory. He saw angels and horses of chariots of fire. He no longer saw the struggle. He saw the glory. God says, my promise to you is you're no longer going to see the struggle. You're no longer going to see the pain. You're no longer going to see through the eyes of hardship. You're going to see the glory. You're going to see where my presence is. And there you will desire to be. Are you ready to see your struggles in? Lift up your hands. Close your eyes. Here he comes. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on your son. Jesus, oh God. There's such a glorious presence. Pastor, I'm telling you, your daughter that led worship tonight or the last song, the glory of God was so heavy on her. I literally thought prophesy and she began to sing the inspired song of the Lord. And I heard the Spirit of God say, where is she? Well, it, it, she's fine. But this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. Oh, there she is. Look at, look at From behind this. This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. You have not seen anything yet. He said, in the night season, I'm about to invade you with dreams and visions. And I'm going to cause you to wake up with a smile on your face. The last two and a half years have been very difficult for the prophetic unction inside of you. But I heard the Lord say, even as the calendar changes, the switch turns on and you're going to see from a new place. You won't see life through the eyes of a struggle. You won't see through the eyes of, of difficulties and past pains. But you will begin to see through the eyes that illuminates the future. I heard the Lord say, my word is going to illuminate the pathway. And the word of God is the lamp to your feet and the light in which I'm directing you upon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on a journey, says the Lord. And I saw him bring to you an encounter where you feel like, God, am I floating? But he said, no, I'm leading. You've already had this experience where you saw yourself in a third person point of view. And you didn't know if you were in your body or out of your body. And then you thought it was you, but it wasn't. It was me. And he took you through fields, through valleys, and to a high hill. And he caused you to see things that you wondered, God, is this me? And he said, no, it's not you. It's me showing you what tomorrow holds. And he says, and I'm going to show you the songs over the hearts of cities. I'm going to show you from the hill the song that needs to be sung over the nation and into the lives of a people. And you will begin to sing the song. And, and from that hill, you saw your voice echoing and you saw rain come. But when the rain came, you saw desolate places become fruitful. God says, daughter, I'm showing you what the songs that you're about to release into the atmosphere are going to do. They're going to bring healing to barren places. They're going to bring life to broken families. They're going to heal the child that is sick. And it's going to bring, it's going to bring a restoration. God says the spirit of restoration is upon you to bring healing to the nations. He says you are a healing dew. You are a, a soothing anointing that will come over the presence of my people and set them at liberty. God says get ready to step into a new prophetic place in your song ministry. Ah, just lift up your hands. Holy Spirit, I anoint the very purposes of God in this child, in your daughter. And I pray that the, 
the mighty things of God would take her further, cause her to see more and hear with greater clarity. So as she sings that a people are set at liberty, I just released this into her atmosphere. There it goes. There's going to be the weeping that's going to come over you. Don't even fight it. Just let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. I send the word. Jesus. God. She's in a brown sweater with glasses. Yes. Will you stand? This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He said, I'm about to release you from my hand. And I'm going to propel you forward. Everything that you've been facing in this last season, you felt like it was tension. And you, were, you felt like you were drifting further and further from the things of God. But he said, it's not so. He says, did you not press in? Did you not pray? Have you not been reading my word? And you said these words to the Lord. God, I feel so far from you. Why is everything so hard? Why is everything so difficult? But the Lord says, did I not put it in your spirit? Who is the clay to question the potter? And God says, and you still continued to feel like you were losing ground. But God says, I want you to see who you are. You're an arrow from my quiver, chosen for the nations. He says, you're a person that I have chosen to hit a specific target or mark. He says, what you thought was you losing ground was nothing more than my hand applying tension to the bow that I have strung you on. And he says, now I'm about to open my hand and you're about to catapult and suddenly be launched forward. And the Lord says, the reason I had to draw you back was because I had to draw you away from people of negativity, people of insensitivity, people that cause rejection, people of bitterness, people of strife, people of anger, people of contention that surrounded you. He says, so I pulled you out of it. I pulled you away from it and now that I pulled you far enough away I'm about to open my hand and you're going to go through it and when you break through it he says you create an avenue and a pathway for those that were bitter contention full of strife and disappointment rejection and bitter you provide a way for them to what get launched forward that they might find the mark the Lord says I will use you to reach back and pull a people forward. He said, the day of loss in your life is over. The day of acceleration is at hand. And he says, and many will be brought to the kingdom because your voice will be loud. Disappointment has been broken and the promise has been revealed. Rejoice, 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 says the Spirit of God. Come on, someone say yes. telling you one of these days I'm just going to have to go row by row I kid you not Tampico Mexico the pastor told me one time prophet you only have to pray for everyone that has a green bracelet and it was the whole church 1200 people my wife took one side I took the other and one by one, we began to minister. Service started at 9 o'clock. You know what time it ended? 11. It ended for that night. The next morning, service started at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. And pastor said, there's only about 120 people left. Can I pick you up an hour early? And so I said, yes. And my wife took one side and I took another. And then we ministered two services. God poured out a word into every single person. Can I tell you that the only way you can do something like that is when people are hungry. Can I tell you what I feel in this atmosphere? an appetite. Come on, if you're hungry, 
If you're hungry for the things of God, if you're hungry, come on, pull on His presence. If you're hungry, call on His name. If you're hungry, shout and take a moment and give the Father a praise break and say, yeah! Yeah. This young man in this, I know you're working. That's why God's going to bless you. You know, some of the people that are often forgotten are the cameramen and women, the switchers, the people in the control room operating the service. What's your name, young man? Jace. Jace? Hi, Jace. I'm Rob. Just hold your hands up. I'm seeing a few things unfold. <laughs> this is going to sound weird. But I saw butterflies flying out of your mouth when you opened. <clears throat> the Greek word for metamorphosis, for butterfly transformation is metamorphosis. And so the reason why butterflies are flying out of your mouth is because you're going to speak a word of metamorphosis, a word of transformation. When you open your mouth, you're going to speak to a generation, to your friends, to your families, and their hearts are going to be suddenly changed and transformed. You didn't know this a couple years ago that God was going to call you to be a, a pastor or a leader of a generation and a people. You were out doing your own thing and then God suddenly intervened and made your heart so hungry for him. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I have put the word of transformation in your mouth. I have put it in your spirit and when you open your mouth, it will drip life to a generation and bring forth their change. He said, son, I'm anointing you this day for the greater purposes that I've set in you and these purposes shall be fulfilled. You are a word that will bring transformation to the way a mind thinks and you will cause them to ascend to a high place and see from above all that I have for them. Come on, if you believe that, say yes. This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He said, I'm about to open your eyes and you're going to see in a new realm. He says, you have been saying, God, I need to not only see but hear the promises. And I heard the Spirit of God say, you won't be one that is a doubter like Thomas. He says, what you will be is one that will activate the Thomases to see. God says today, I'm going to cause you to lay hands on people and activate faith. You're, you're going to have a gift to lay hands on people and cause them to come into the Spirit. God God says when you pray for a people expect to see the suddenlies come upon them the sudden uh sudden prophecy sudden tongues and, and interpretation suddenly they're going to begin to speak in tongues and they're going to recognize that God is amongst them I hear the spirit of God say my word is going deep inside of your heart and out of it when you speak will come revelation of life and hope you will be a word of encouragement that will be set upon a people bringing them into a place of transformation for the spirit of God says this is a brand new daytime and season for your heart to rejoice because I saw everything that operated against you get cut off this last nine months you have been in a battlefield, in a minefield. It seemed like everywhere you put your foot, you're like, you had to test the ground. But God says, this is your season. The word of the Lord has been spoken. Come, even as I said unto Peter, step out of the boat, come. Peter began to walk on a word. God says, this is your day to walk on the words that I promised and you'll get to the other side. He says, this is the day that you will see the promises fulfilled. Get ready for a brand new... Get ready for the brand promises to be made new. The promises that I've given you to be made new. Come on, someone say yes. Everywhere I look, I feel that unction. This young lady in the brown. Jesus. Will you just lift up your hands? This is a holy moment. I got to walk around you really quick. Jesus. There is a protection coming around you. There is a covering of his spirit that's surrounding you. At times you have felt bare. At times you have felt unguarded or unprotected. But God said that day is over. He says, my hedge has covered you. And he says, I visit you in the strangest times of day. I see you in the car. And then suddenly I see you pull over. 
And as you pull over, I see you weep. And you thought it was a tear to get rid of stress, but it really it was a tear of refreshment because I saw the stress that you were facing. You thought it was a negative, but the Lord said it wasn't. It was me. I was pulling you off the road. I was pulling your mind out of the battle, and I was bringing you to a place where you know that I hear your cry. God says, I've inclined my ear to your darkest hour. And he says, the days of sadness where you've looked upon your pillow and put your head in it and yelled and said, God, can you hear me? He said, I heard you every time. He says, you felt alone. And there's times where you've let the fog come over the mirror. So you could look yourself. You were looking at yourself and then the fog would come. The mist would come and it would cover your face. And then you would feel better about yourself because you couldn't see. You felt like you were invisible. But the Lord says, that's the biggest lie. He says, the enemy wanted to take away your beauty. Because when you feel unworthy. You quit. God says this last year you had to deal with the mindset of quitting on life, quitting on people, quitting on church, quitting on things. But he says that day of quitting is over. He says I'm sealing my identity on the inside of you and I'm going to cause my spirit to blaze in you as a mighty fire because I am sending you forward in the ways of God. He says the days of you feeling alone by yourself or isolated with no one hearing you is over he says your cry has been heard and i inclined my ear to you jesus i love the word inclined from hebrew perspective pastor because that word inclined it means to be fine-tuned nathan it means to be fine-tuned to be played See, the enemy, he tries to make you too tight, that stress. So when the string is played, it pops, and now it makes a noise. Or to get you to become so wobbly in your faith that he loosens you up, that there's no tune. But God says, I have finally tuned you in this season. And he says, even as my servant walked around, it was me tuning your ear to hear and making your heart ready for the sound of melodies and sweet sounds that are going to come. God says, get ready because your hand is going to begin to write some things. And these things will have a poetic form to it. And they will be things that will be spoken by some and sung by others. And they will be words of healing and deliverance. He says, that's my promise to you. Your writing is filled with purpose, says the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. Can I pray for her? come up here all the way from Singapore to the US but this is what I heard the Spirit of God say he said I'm gonna make you more than a musician and more than an artist he says I'm gonna cause what you play to be a sound a prophetic harmony and what you draw to become an image of beauty you're going to look upon people and you're going to see the prophetic mystery that's in them. Draw it and give it to them or play it and release it over them without ever speaking a word. But the Lord says your mouth will not remain silent for in years to come I will develop a confidence that when you open your mouth with boldness and clarity words of life will flow from your tongue and it will inspire a people in generation and it will set them at liberty for God says it's no accident that I brought you here and it's for purpose that I'm going to unfold the destiny that I have get ready to be one that plays multiple instruments you're going to have an affection for a guitar and then you're going to have an affection for the keyboard and that's just the beginning for God says I'm going to give you an eclectic ear and you're going to hear the sounds of heaven and you will come into agreement with it and that word to agree in the Greek is symphoneo and you will become a sound of a symphony a harmonious sound before the things of God setting a people at liberty God says today I impart that power of the prophetic into your life to release unto a generation I bless you in the name of the Lord
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> so, I just saw a beautiful image. <laughs> I saw many members of your church running to the altar with their hands not up, but down. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he says, when a lion is going into the field to hunt, it hunts in the tall grass. But for them to get into the fields where the prey is, it has to walk along an ancient path. God says those that are running to the altar with their hands down are causing the tall grass to be pat down so others can find the hunting ground. That others can find the lane into the place of promise. And I heard the Spirit of God say, those that run to the altar with their hands down are preparing the ways for their families and their generations to find the pathway that has been paved before them. You are the forerunners of what God is about to do next. Because this house's emphasis is not on the now, but it's on the future, as well as the generations to come, what's going to happen is you're going to make a trail known, and the mystery will be revealed. And it was so funny because when I saw the hands run down, everything that they touched began to come to life. And I saw an array of colors beginning to dance in the sky. And then I heard the Lord say, a new promise of a greater place is being written over this house. I don't know why, but I heard the Lord say to tell you 10 properties, 10 locations. In the next five years, there's going to be wayworld outreaches that are going to be planted. And a trail from all directions are going to lead to the, to, the, to the harvest field, to the ground of promise where a people will find their king. My goodness. Put your hands in the air. The whole atmosphere just shifted right now. Way in the back, there's a young lady that stood up really quick. Will you come up here real quick? Yes. Come, come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Just keep your hands lifted. Jesus. Ah. Even as you turn this corner, God says everything in your family is about to turn. No, turn the corner. Turn. Come. Come. God says your family is about to turn the corner. Even as you turned the corner, he said this was the corner of change. He said everything is about to elevate. Everything is about to escalate, but not in a bad way, but according to my promise. God says this last year has been difficult. Heartache and disappointment has been set before you. But the Lord says today, he says, I pull out my whiteboard eraser and I clean the board. He said, I pick up the etch-a-sketch and I shake it. And he says, what you did not like in the last year, he says, I'm bringing it to an end. The page has changed and I'm the author of the book and I have declared over your life it will be a fruitful year. The day of loss, the day of lack, the day of everything breaking around you is over. He says the day of promise is set before you. He said as you turned a corner you stepped into a, a brand new season of greater increased favor and blessing for surely my presence is upon you. A new day has begun. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice says the spirit of the living God. See, I like you because you're radical and crazy. There is something about you that's just... <clears throat> Some would say strong, but that's not really it. Bold. <clears throat> you're a truth-sayer. You speak the word 
And when you speak the word, it's truth. And sometimes it hits people like a hammer. And they get all mad because your words are strong, but they're not strong in, in destruction. They're strong for reconstruction. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you yield two hammers. You yield two hammers. You hold two hammers in your hand. In your left hand, you hold the hammer like a sledgehammer. And that's the one that speaks the truth that breaks down the lies that a people have believed. But when you break down a wall, it's because in your right hand is the construction hammer. And that hammer is going to rebuild what the other hammer destroyed. God says the word in you is you are a way maker. You create room, but when you create room, he says you have to remove a thing to build. God says your nature is to remove a thing to rebuild a right thing. God says you are a foundational speaker. You speak to the truth, the foundation, so the house could be built. God says get ready because there is some that have quit on the process, but they're going to turn around and come back and say, I know what you said was spoken in love. I know what you said was I needed to hear it, but because my heart was fragile and I was easily offended, I ran away, but I never forgot the truth that you spoke. And they'll say, build me. God says, I will build them because you have not stopped praying. You have not stopped interceding. He says, you spend many days on your knees. You spend many hours with your heart turned towards the heavens and you pray for the broken and the wounded and the lost soul. And he said, I'm about to bring them back. I'm about to turn the prodigal around and bring them to the house and they're going to be radically transformed and they will become the fruitful in the house. The day of their affliction is no more. The day of their isolation comes to an end because I found an intercessor. One that would stand in the gap, pray and believe and now they will be set at liberty. He said, I impart to you a brand new day. Oh my God. Just receive. You know what the new day is? Simple. Those that have quit get back into the game. You ever play checkers? What happens to the one that gets jumped early in the game? He gets put on the sideline. But what happens when the checker crosses the enemy's line? It's called king me. God says your prayer has brought you into the enemy's back line. And the ones that gave up that you didn't give up on, they're going to be put crown side up and be put back into the game. With greater mobility, with a greater understanding that this is God's promise. And they will emerge victorious. God says you are a voice of victory that will be spoken into the heart of a people that has said, I can't make it. But you'll turn them around and give them a new day where they will become successful, says the Spirit of God. My goodness. I almost don't want to look because I'm seeing so many things go off in my spirit. gentleman with the baseball cap on. Can I pray for you? Come here. What's your name? Santos? Bless you, man. Jesus really likes you. Grab my hand. <clears throat> God's taking you on a journey, Santos. I'm seeing your childhood. And as I see your childhood, I see you shaking your head with many disappointments. I see you broken and angry. And then I see you in a phase where you said, I don't care. Then I saw you in a phase where you said, I'll do me, live for myself. And after many years of many people praying, you finally said, I'll give God a chance. And now you're standing in a life of transformation. And now as you look back, you look back at all the broken hearts, all the lives that you influenced and people you hurt, and this lie has come to you and said you're guilty. And so when you look back in your life, you look at harm, you look at pain, and you look at the lives that I've 
could have destroyed. But God says, look again. Look what I saved you from. Now look ahead. Watch this. Peter denied Christ three times. The rooster crowed. The rooster crowed symbolizing a brand new day. The rooster is the trumpet of the morning. You've heard the rooster crow. It declares it's a brand new day. That's what Jesus prophesied to Peter. Then Peter heard Jesus from a shoreline. My little children, have you caught anything? And he had took his garments off. In the fishing boat, then put him back on and jumps into the water, swims to the shoreline, and Jesus restores him three different times at the fire. He said all that to say this. God's bringing you to the next place. He's restored you. But now it's Pentecost. You know who Jesus called to stand up and preach the Sermon on the Mount that day? Peter. He didn't call. John. His beloved. He didn't call anyone else, Matthew or Mark. You know who he called? Peter, the denier. And you know what he did that day? He stood up and he preached. This is that which Joel prophesied. You know how many people got saved that day? 3,000. You know what that tells me? A thousand people for every denial got turned around. God says, my promise to you is when you look back, you're going to see the multitudes that I'm going to save in your future. He said, Santos, he says, I am going to make you a saint in my army. I'm going to make you a warrior and I'm going to cause you to be a deliverer. He says, your tongue will not be destructive and your ways will not be divisive, but your ways will lead a people unto promise and life and you will end their death and take away their misery and show them a love they've never experienced. God says, I have filled your heart with so much grace that you find yourself weeping in atmospheres of worship. God says, that heart is what I'm going to pour into bitter men and broken families, and it's going to cause them to rise up and be fruitful. God says there's an impartation of the prophetic that's going to come on you because you're going to need the word of the Lord in your mouth to set some of these families free. God says, I'm going to use you to break off catalytic roots from a people. <laughs> there are so many people you know that they don't go to church. They say, I love God. And you say, where do you go to church? And they say, I'm Catholic. <laughs> they don't go to a church. They're just, I'm Catholic. I was born this way. And God says, you're going to preach the truth that I have given you. And it's going to cause them to say, I'll come check out your house. And they'll get radically saved. God says, today is the day of salvation. You will be a soul winner of many. And you will set them at liberty. <laughs> I bless you, says the Lord. I know the power of God hit him because he drooled all over me. <laughs> He's like, what happened? Did you come to take a nap? Kind of. Close your eyes. God's not done. Why do we get up so fast? Just put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart. Open it. Watch. Jesus. Saturate him. Taking a deep breath. <laughs> there it is. Take it. <laughs> More. Lord, just sit on him. Let angels just rest upon his chest. So he can't just spring up until you finish what you started. Think about this. Can I tell you a story? I once wanted the prophetic so bad, I went to a conference. They wouldn't let me in because I didn't have $75. I had drove from Southern California all the way to Northern California, and I had already given away all my money. And so they said, I can't let you in. And so one of the prophets that I knew, 
I flagged him down and I said, hey, I came here to be a part of it, but they won't let me in. And he said, don't worry, follow me. So I followed him. And you know what he did? He opened a window. Everyone sat in chairs. I stood outside looking in. There was three prophets. There was about 100 people in this call-out room, Pastor. Two prophets looked at me one time, never looked back at me. They were only focused on those that were in. But this other prophet kept looking at me. And one time he looked at me and growled like, he had this light. And I was like, whoa. (laughs) And he went back to prophesying. And I was just so crazy that I stood for three hours outside of a window looking in. I didn't care if I got a word. I just wanted to be in the atmosphere of the prophetic. And about an hour and 15 minutes into this probably three-hour meeting, the prophet reached his hands through the window and grabbed me by the back of my head and the front and laid hands violently on me and said, everything that you have placed in me, I give to him by impartation. The power of God, boom, hit me on the outside. I didn't have a carpet. I didn't have a nice little towel. I had concrete. I didn't even have a catcher. Bounced off the floor. Power of God filled me and I shook like a shot squirrel. That's just East Tennessee language for like this. I was caught under the glory, Pastor. That the people walked out. And I never got off the floor. The prophet that, the people that, they just, wow, he's good. They walked around, went around the other side. And when God was done, I was able to get up. Can I tell you something? When God touches you, don't be quick to leave. Because, listen, 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 listen. What God started speaking doesn't mean he's finished speaking. So if you just linger longer, you're going to hear him or see him in a manner in which you've never saw or heard him from before. Most people want to hear God's voice, but they're not still enough to hear it. We're so quick to move to get up, to go. But this is going to be the season where you learn to linger like Joshua, the son of Nun. When Moses received his fill, he departed, but Joshua said, I ain't going. And he lingered in the presence. I hear the Spirit of God saying these words. I'm going to give you the power to linger in the house of God. I'm going to give you the power to not want to run from presence, but to sit in it until you're full. My God. Can I pray for you two right there? Yeah. Y'all know each other? Come on. Oh. Brother, you need a hug. Really. What's your name, sir? Hi, Richard. When I looked at you, I saw the arm of God embrace you. And I said, why is this? He says, because he needs to know he's my son. God wants to so affirm you because there's a lot of battles that are going on in your mind. You start and you quit a thing. But it's because you lack affirmation. And so you don't feel like if I don't achieve, no one cares. So you strive, 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 strive. God said, quit. Quit striving. Quit trying to be something that you already are. He said, I've called you to be a king and a priest. You want to live the king's lifestyle. But God says, I'm going to awaken the priesthood in you. The man of devotion, the man of intimacy, the man of the word, the man of prayer. The man of giving. God says, you've learned how to hold tight. 
because lack was around you. But God says, I took away lack a long time ago, but your hand is still tight. He said, let go. And watch what I do for you. Let go for him. Just hold your hands in the air. The Father's love is going to come to you right now. And it's going to so affirm you, not for what you do, not for what you accomplish, but just because you're a son. And you're going to feel all this striving fall off of you right now. I see these burdens that you're carrying. God is going to set you free. And you're going to feel your whole world change. Because this weight that you've been carrying is going to be removed once and for all. Make sense? Look at me. God says you are my son who I beloved. And I'm pleased in you. You don't have to prove anything. He says, but let me approve you. You know what God longs to do? Kiss you. You know what the kiss from God means? It's a Hebrew word, nasak. And it means to equip a man to overcome the battle he faces. When God kisses you, he gives you the power to shake things off. You know what you can't ever do? Let go of things. So when your heart gets mad, you know what you could do? You could hold on to bitterness for a long time. So something that happened two years ago, in your mind, it's like it just happened because it could make you that hot in a moment, right? You ready to let that go? I'm going to hug you. And I'm going to ask you if you want the kiss of God. And if you do... I'm just going to ask you to put your head forward, and I'm going to kiss you on the crown of your head, but it's not me. It's God the Father. And you know what's going to happen? He's going to dress you to overcome. You see it in principle in Luke, the 15th chapter. The prodigal son, when he came home, the father ran, fell on his neck, and then he what? Kissed him. Then he dressed him. Put on my best robe. Put on a ring on his finger. Put sandals on his feet. Kill the fatted calf. That was all affirmation. So I'm going to hug you. And then after I hug you, if you'd like it, put your head forward. And then when God kisses you, you're going to get weak in your knees. Because you know what love does? Collapses us. And that's what you need. You need a collapsing presence of God. Make sense? You want that? This is a holy moment. Stretch your hands towards him. Father, your word says the prodigal son's father fell on the neck, which means he removed the yoke. But then you kissed him. And I pray that as you kiss your son, that he would feel the equipping and the approval. He would be dressed for success. All of his strivings, contentions, disappointments, and angers would be lifted once and for all. And he would be accepted in your beloved. I heard the Lord say that there's times where he has slept and you've seen him in struggle while he sleeps. And your hand has been stretched out. Saying, God set him free from the battle of rejection. 
hurt people, hurt people they love. And so many times you have felt like, God, why am I so wounded? And he says, today, receive your healing. The man that was no longer exists. A man that is will rise. The memories of yesterday's pain will fade from him. And the glory of the man that you've prayed for and interceded for in the night season. I've seen you take special love gifts and offerings and put it at the altar. And say, God, I know there's more. And God says, the tears that you shed, I shared with you. And he says, and I've captivated and captured them and I'm pouring them upon you. You're going to feel this saturating presence come over you. And he says, in this, your land will be made fruitful. He said, the season of desolate things is over. And the season of promise has begun. I pour forth my goodness. <laughs> there it is. Just take it. In Jesus' name. <sighs> Just let me know the time. My Jesus. You guys are always so gracious. Absolutely love everyone. Can I pray for one more person? Is that okay? Perfect. Who wants to be prayed for? <laughs> Everybody in the house. <laughs> right? <laughs> for every hand that went up, this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. <clears throat> he said, what you saw as hardship and difficulty. He said, now look again. He says, this was not done to you. This was done for you. For out of great affliction comes a fruitful son. I say unto you, you are Ephraim's. Ephraim's name means doubly fruitful. For the Lord says, I bring you out of the land of your affliction and I bring you into your double portion, your doubly fruitful season. The old has passed. The new day has begun. Even as this year comes unto an end, a new day begins. He says, declare unto yourself that my doubly fruitful season is here. Come on, if you receive that, someone say yes. Father, I release it, so let it be done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's all stand up. How many received from the Lord today? Wasn't that awesome? Let's give Prophet Rob Sanchez a round of applause, you guys. We got to have a night. We just do this all night long. The only reason why we're ending a little bit now, we got kids rolled over there and taking care of our kids. Let's all bow our head. Let's close our eyes, you guys. Let's close in prayer here tonight. You guys, Friday, New Year's Eve, 7 o'clock here. Do not miss it. If you're thinking about going to a party, do not go to that party. Be in the house of God. You can party after with your family, your Christian friends afterwards. Christian friends afterwards. So it's, oh, I'm going to go to church, go party. Yeah, come to church, 7 o'clock. How you start is how you're going to finish. So come to the house. Every head by every eyes closed. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, maybe somebody brought you here tonight and you say, man, I want a relationship with God. I like what I'm hearing tonight. If you're here tonight, if you'd like to make Jesus your Savior, if you'd like to be forgiven of all your sins, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I repent and I ask forgiveness of all the sins I've committed. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a follower. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Holy Spirit, fill me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Prophet Rob Sanchez, he has a table out in the foyer. Go support him. There's a few books out there. Support him. You guys, Friday night, we'll be back here at 7 o'clock for our New Year's service. God bless you guys. If God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great night. We'll see you back Friday at 7 o'clock. Friday, 7 p.m. here for our New Year's Eve.